Good evening, you lot. How's it going? Welcome. Thursday evening, and somewhere in the world, it's two o'clock. So Thursdays at two. Um, how's it going? Uh, good to see everybody here. Um, I don't do this very often, uh, but I don't really have a plan for this live stream. I don't have a particular topic that I'm going to talk to you guys about. I don't have a specific um, agenda for this meeting. Um, I'm just doing a Q&A. I thought let's jump on and see what you guys want to hear from me. Um, there's a couple of things that I'll show you and talk through, but I thought let's just hang out. Let's have a chat for an hour um, or so. Um, I did a poll recently on my buy me a coffee for those who don't know buy me a coffee allows you to engage with your supporters you know i have a blog on there where i put posts up um i send out emails to my supporters and um try and engage a little bit more with those who support my channel um and so i put a poll on the buy me a coffee the other day where i said what do you guys want to see more of from me um and i would be interested to see what you guys think as well um in the chat so the options were personal videos about my non-scientology day-to-day life uh, more interviews with ex-scientologists uh, more interviews with other cult survivors uh, more merch designs uh, better membership benefits one-to-one -one group video calls with supporters and more videos breaking down Scientology tech beliefs and practices. Um, so those are the options. And I got some really interesting feedback off the back of that and um, a good little discussion in the Q&A as well. And um, it's become clear that um, you guys want more kind of chilled out Q&A engagement stuff. So this is the first of those. Let's just talk. Let's hang out for a bit. But these are the results. Um, most people want more interviews with exes and other cult survivors. Um, and I'm totally down for that. You know, feedback is really important. That's how you grow a community and that's how you grow as a person. So, um, so yeah, that's what we're going to do. Um, if you guys support me on Buy Me A Coffee, please head to my page, buymeacoffee.com slash apostate Alex, and you can vote in this too. Um, I'll also be doing a poll on YouTube, my community page, to hear what you guys want and, and you know, give you more of what you've asked for. So, Let's get on with this. We've got a few questions already. I've been starring. Um, thank you, Mrs. J, for gifting five memberships. That's very kind of you. Um, before we do jump into too many of these questions, I thought I would talk through something that I found the other day. Um, I have tons and tons of documents from my time in Scientology that I've started to go through recently. And what a whirlwind that has been emotionally. Um, and this is one of them. It's handwritten um, and it's called Habits and Normal Routines. So on one side is a bullet point list of all the things that I'm doing wrong. And on the other side is the handlings, what I'm going to do to fix those problems. So I thought it'd be quite fun to read through some of those to show you um, the sort of stuff you do as a Scientologist. So the first one. So this is like things that I'm doing wrong and I need to fix. So the first one, calling up FSMs only one or two days before the booth. Now, for a little bit of context, FSMs is field staff members. Um, so those are paying parishioners, Scientologists who are doing courses, and we want to get them out selling books, engaged in recruiting more people. They're called a field staff member. So my problem was that I called them up only one or two days before we went out book selling which therefore meant we didn't have many people. So the handling is call the FSMs on Wednesday for the Sunday booth and reconfirm them on Friday. So that means I would get their confirmation before the day before so we knew how many people were coming and therefore we'd get more people. Um, I'm not going to go through all of them because some of them are quite boring, but for example... Um, Oh, number three, relying on the same few booksellers, no training up new ones or recruiting. And the handling was to book FSMs in for drilling on Friday and confirm them for Sunday booth. So same uh, same solution. Uh, number four, no work on bookshops, just a handful of phoning them in on Thursday just before two. So this was part of my job as director of public book sales was I would try and get books in local shops, try and sell them so they would do the selling for us. 
um, and there were only one or two bookshops that um, that were selling Dianetics. So the problem was no, I wasn't doing any work on getting more bookshops. There were only a handful and I'd only phone them up just before two on a Thursday when I was counting my stats. And the handling is get out of non-E, non-existence, that means, with bookshops, supply them with posters and promo, um, establish myself as the new contact. So the idea is do some promotion and get them in. Um, one of the particularly funny ones is number eight on this list. I, I will scan this in. I'll upload it at some point. Number eight, waiting for data on orders. For example, if Charlie says wait five minutes, no production is done for the 45 minutes I actually wait. So essentially, I would say I'd be doing something and I'd ask Charlie for help and Charlie would be like, yeah, cool. Let's chat in five minutes. So I'd stop what I was doing and wait until Charlie was ready to speak to me. And then it would be 45 minutes later that he'd actually be ready. Um, and so then no work would be done for 45 minutes. And that was kind of pissing me off. And the handling was get on with something else um, and get number eight. Waiting for data on orders. Yeah, yeah. Number eight. Uh, get on with something else and get them to come to me. Also have a common cycle with Charlie about time wasted while waiting for, uh, for example, today. Um, so the idea is if someone says I need to speak to you, cool. Well, get them to come to me rather than me changing everything about them. So this is just an example of the sort of thing you do as a staff member. You know, write up everything that I'm doing wrong and then come up with a solution for all that. Um, and I'd completely forgotten about this. Another one, option 10, uh, the book and DVD was a standard package, but it's only two raw book sales with that. So the option was get at least one additional booklet into every sale so that for one person, we could sell them three books rather than two. And that therefore would uh, increase my book sales. So I'll upload that and we can talk through it another time. But I think it was quite fun. I've also found this list. This is my longer term BP, meaning battle plan um, for book sales. Uh, and this is kind of like how we were going to use social media events, what we're going to do to sell books, book outlets, promotion, and advertising. So that's like our longer term um, plan and strategy. And then this one is um, prospects, who and how to bosh. So this was write up, and it's three pages long, write up everybody that I know that hasn't bought a book in Scientology and a step-by-step -step one, to like A, B, C, D, E, F, G, um, how I'm going to get them to buy a book, um, how I'm going to turn them from a non-Scientologist into a Scientologist. So I had to write down every single person I know and come up with a plan for all of them. Um, so we'll go through that at some point as well, but I just wanted to share with you um, the sort of documents I've uncovered, and I will go through them um, at some point. Uh, Karen, question, has Charlie always hated cake? Uh, no, he he liked cake when I knew him. Uh, I think he just hated that particular cake. Uh, in exactly, Mr. J, hashtag cake gate. Uh, for those of you who don't know what this is about, I did a protest outside London Org for LRH's birthday on March 13th, and I bought a cake for um, Mr. Hubbard, and it was uh, Charlie stepped on it and it then became a thing called Cake Gate. Um, all right, let's start going through some of these questions. But before we do, I'm going to share something with you. Um, and this is your chance to get involved. Um, I have a merch store, apostatealex.com, and I released this new t shirt, uh, the Potential Trouble Source t shirt. It was quite popular. I've done it in a few different colors previously. Um, now, Obviously, fourth wall will print on demand. So there's no reason why not to make everything available all of the time. Uh, but I think it makes it a little bit more special for you guys if there's only going to be a limited print run of certain things. You know, if it, if they're only going to be 100 or 50 or they're only going to be available for this month, it just makes it a little bit more special and makes you feel like you've got something that, um, you know, is a bit more special and, and you can only get for a certain period of time. So this particular t-shirt, I'm only going to make 50 of them. So once 50 have been made, they're going to be gone and I'll take them down. You won't be able to buy them again in this particular color, the peach edition. Um, so I'm going to do a giveaway. Um, if you guys fancy yourselves one of these for free, uh, stick in the live chat now the word Xenu, X-E-N-U. Um, and what we'll do is we'll use this giveaway tool on StreamYard and it will randomly pick someone who's typed in that word into the live chat and uh, we'll give one of those away. So if you want one of those t-shirts, write Xenu in the chat right now. 
I'm just readjusting my rug. Um, awesome. We like to see this. Entries going up. Nice. Um, and we will also um, do, we'll check in on this a little bit later. You don't need to type it in more than once. It will only count you once if you type in Xenu. Um, so once you've entered once, that will be plenty. We can see it going up. All right, we'll leave that ticking over for now and we'll do a draw a little bit later on. Um, so yeah, we'll do that. Um, okay, let's do some of these questions. Um, where are we? Ba -ba -da -bum. Okay, Matt Beavis, when does the podcast drop? Excellent question. I'm glad you've asked. Um, I announced recently that I'm going to be doing a podcast called Potential Trouble Source. And the idea is I talk to people who we don't hear from every day, you know, um, not just Scientology, but other cults, people like lawyers, producers, directors, journalists, people who have um, played a part in being a trailblazer in exposing different cults. And so the idea is there will be a limited season of like eight episodes or something, six or eight. We'll drop those and then we'll record the next season and drop those a few months later. And it's something I'm working on to make sure it's really good quality. Um, I want to make it really special. Um, I had a podcast previously before I started doing the YouTube stuff um, from a marketing perspective. Um, for those who don't know, I work in the architecture and design field as well as now the entertainment industry. But in the architecture and design field, I had a podcast called Design Business um, Podcast. I think it's still up there on Spotify and stuff, um, where I interviewed people to do with marketing and PR in architecture and design. And that was really fun. I really enjoyed it. So I thought I would do a similar thing here. Um, so that's something I'm working on. It will be a while, Matt. Um, it's not going to be anytime soon. I'm not going to be dropping the podcast for at least a, a couple of months, I think, maybe a month or two. Um, but I wanted to announce it um, and so that you guys know it's something I'm working on and I'll start recording the episodes. I've already started booking guests, um, but I just want to make it um, something really high quality. So it's going to take time. So it'll be a while, um, but I'll let you guys know. Um, Theta Novis, I enjoyed your live chat with Chris earlier. It was hilarious. Thank you. And it was really how much it was good to see how much R Hubbard was wanting to control everyone and everything. Yes. Um, I was on Chris Shelton's channel earlier today. We did a um, breakdown of a recently surfaced video of L. Ron Hubbard at St. Hill um, that we hadn't seen before um where he's giving an auditing session um it's from 1963 uh we just did a reaction video which is quite fun so go and check that out heavy messed worker the hearing with the council is all too much like a committee of evidence did they dream this up specific especially for alex or is it part of their procedures yes yeah, so tomorrow east grinstead town council Finally, we have our hearing date. Um, I will be heading down to East Grinstead and they're going to be hearing my complaint about them um, censoring the public record and trying to silence us um, and calling me a bully and all that sort of stuff. Over a thousand pages of evidence have been supplied by both sides um, on my side and on their side. Um, and we did have a date scheduled last week or the week before, which I rescheduled because I was sick. Tomorrow is the complaints hearing so i will be live tomorrow evening i'm sure um giving you a rundown of how it went um it's not dreamed up for me it is part of their procedure there's a whole complaints policy that they have in place that dictates how these things go um but in terms of their response to my um complaint and their response to my activism absolutely definitely is um scarily um similar to scientology's tactics um and especially the fact that they were trying to get me to they were trying to have the hearing with counselors who are supporting scientology and it took a bit of effort to um get it to a place where it's counselors who aren't scientology supporters uh the fact that i cannot um take any note well i can take notes but i can't record the conversation the minutes are all dictated and written by them that's all their own policy even though it is very similar to scientology mr j you did grand in paris hun thank you paris is a lot of fun and there's one or two more articles coming out about paris on the scientology business very soon um that i'm sure you um i'll share with you and you'll find interesting hey mark scientology peeling the onion thanks mark hi alex this is mark we are excited oh me too and um i wish i could tell everybody in the chat what mark is talking about there being excited but it is all a big secret there is something i'm working on at the moment 
and uh, I'll share it when I can. But yes, I'm excited too. Thanks, Mark. Um, Joanna Bananas. Love your username. I would love to hear about how to balance everything. There is so much between your day job and your YouTube and social justice and advocacy. That is a fantastic question. And how I balance it? I don't know. I mean, I have historically been quite bad at balancing that sort of stuff. Um, and I'm getting better at it. Um, it kind of helps that a lot of my work happens in the summer period. So this is a kind of dry spell for me over the winter as a freelancer. Um, I deal, I do most work in the summer. So it's quite quiet for me, which means I have a lot more time to do the activism um, at the moment than I normally would. But balancing it is hard. Um, YouTube is a strand. It's a part of what I'm doing. Um, but ultimately, the activism and stuff behind the scenes is what's taking up most of my time. The investigative journalism, the reporting on stuff, the meetings with um, different officials, investigators and so on. That takes up most of my time as well as YouTube when I can. Um, so how I balance all the day job stuff at the moment, as I said, it's a bit quiet. So I've got more time. But yeah, it's hard to balance it. I also have so many meetings with people in America. Quite often I will be nocturnal and I'll do later streams because I have meetings of people in, you know, LA or people who are eight hours behind. So I try and switch my um, uh, sleeping pattern according to the time zone with the people I'm speaking to. But I'm trying harder to do a lot more UK timed stuff so that I'm not completely nocturnal. Um, but yeah, balancing it is hard. What can I say? Educon, what is Alex's favorite Scientology cult, non Scientology cult documentary and why? Oh, I love that. Um, the Vow. It has to be The Vow, which is about Nexium, which is kind of Scientology adjacent. But um, I love The Vow. Sarah Edmondson is awesome. I had her on the channel with um, Ash from the TSFU podcast a little while ago. And um, we're trying to arrange me going on her podcast too, um, a little bit culty. But she is such a trailblazer. She's done amazing work in taking down Nexium, And... The reason I think it's the best or my favorite non-Scientology documentary is because it clearly documents the amount of work and effort that it takes to take down a cult. And it's kind of similar to Scientology. So there's a lot of comparisons you can draw. Um, so I think it kind of sets the stage for how to um, how we can go about taking down Scientology. Uh, <clears throat> Aaron, could L. Ron Hubbard be a bigger creep? I don't have an answer for that. It's a great one, though. Um, question. Are the proceedings with the council? Oh, I think we've already answered that. You just asked it twice. Thank you. Um, Lynn, didn't call anyone dumb, my dear. Only the passive aggressive questions the other day. Yeah, look, as I said, I'm not telling you off or whatever. I'm just saying that I'm trying not to, um, you know, talk about other creators in a negative way, even if you don't like them, um, even if you disagree with them. This is a place where we're focusing on Scientology, we're focusing on the activism. And, um, you know, if you, I'm not trying to stifle the debate or discussion, but my channel's not the place for that. Um, there are other places where um, that are more appropriate for debating other creators, their content, and um, and all of that. So please try and keep it in the chat on topic and kind and compassionate. Um, we're not going to attack anyone here, um, even if you don't like them. Uh, Negro, thank you so much for the super chat. Do you consider yourself under SPTV? Yes. Um, I don't have the SPTV thing on right now. Let me add it. Uh, there we go. Sometimes I just forget to add it. Sometimes I don't. Uh, yeah, I mean, look, SPTV is no one owns that name. No one <clears throat> has trademarked it. It doesn't belong to anybody. And anyone creating content on YouTube about Scientology can consider themselves part of SPTV. And so, yeah, I... Absolutely. Um, SPTV Foundation is a different thing. That's an organization that is um, run by Aaron Smith Evan. And I think it's important to differentiate and distinct. There's a distinct difference between SPTV and the SPTV Foundation. Um, so I'm not part of the SPTV Foundation. <clears throat> I'm not on the board. I'm not involved in, in that in any way, shape or form, but I am involved in SPTV. That doesn't mean I don't support the foundation, but they are two separate things. Um, so as long as we're clear on on what I'm saying here. Uh, I think that's that's fine. Kelly H, thank you for becoming a new member. Welcome aboard. 
Um, <clears throat> also, just a reminder for those of you just joining, because I'm seeing the view count um, uh, go up. We're going to be doing a, a live draw shortly. So type in the word Xenu in the chat if you want yourselves um, a T-shirt. We're going to give away a PTS peach colored graphic t-shirt um towards the end of this stream so if you want one of these for free pop the word xenu in the chat and we will do a giveaway later on <clears throat> okie dokie let's carry on with some of these um obg foster sarah edmondson gave a ted talk last week yes sarah is awesome i think it was more than a week ago i saw that a, a, a little while ago great TED talk. Um, I think she's awesome and definitely go and support Sarah Edmondson and her podcast, A Little Bit Culty. Learning about life. What is your favorite type of cookie or biscuit? Just a silly question to break the seriousness. Oh, that's a good one. Okay. I love a Jaffa cake. Jaffa cakes are great, right? For those of you in America, I don't think you have Jaffa cakes over there. Jaffa cakes are like little... That, that looks like a biscuit, but it's a cake. It's got a cho thin chocolate layer with like an orange jelly inside it, um, which is just, I love Jaff cakes. They're great. Can't beat a chocolate digestive. Um, I'm also a big fan of Lotus biscuits. You know, the ones that you used to get on airplanes. They're awesome. Um, chocolate fingers as well. Yeah, I like biscuits and Maryland cookies. Can't go wrong with a Maryland cookie. Great question. <clears throat> um joanna bananas again you need such a thick skin for this work you're doing great thank you and i agree you know it's one thing having to uh, moon age daydream there's no such thing as a single jaffa cake have to have more than one yeah if i open a box of jaffa cakes i'm having the whole box i'm there, there is no such thing as just one you have to have the whole lot um joanna you need such thick, such thick skin yeah look so when you start speaking out against scientology you especially when you start doing activism work like i'm doing and like the protesters are doing and you're doing more than just creating videos you you do it with the understanding that osa are going to try and destroy your life like the saying of the the, the quote in fair game is destroy by any means possible right um and so you go into it knowing that that's going to happen and prepare yourself for private investigators and hacking into the website and all that stuff that I knew was going to happen. Um, but, you know, it's also really hard when you have, you know, different dramas and things going on and personal disagreements and the comments that I get on my channel that are telling me to want to live myself and all of that. Um, it's something that's not OSA, that's just internet trolls. And that's something that I wasn't prepared for. But, you know, you have to take it as it comes. And yeah, you have to have thick skin because the moment, if, if I was to let any of that stuff start getting at me, then it wouldn't hold me in good stead for what's to come because I'm sure OSA are going to amplify their attacks on me as time goes on as and as we start making um, headway in the UK. So, yeah, you have to... Uh, you have to sort of definitely have some thick skin. So that's uh, that's true. Um, hey, Selena. Selena from Wales is here. Hi, Selena. Thanks for joining. Welcome. Um, Super Chat. Thank you so much, Ash Rose. Do kids who sign the contract, do they have a chance to leave the org later in life or no? Also, Xenu. Um, okay, so there are a couple of different contracts. So it depends which one you're talking about. Well, kind of, kind of not. There's the Sea Org contract, which is a one billion year commitment where you um, sign up to dedicate your whole life uh, to work for the Church of Scientology and you join the Sea Organization. There's the staff contract, which is either two and a half or five years where you work for a local city level org for, uh, you know, seven Monday to Friday, um, nine till six, like day staff or evening foundation which is the evenings and weekends um so you work full time but you have another job outside of that they're two different contracts but they're also both religious commitments um in the uk none of those contracts have been held up in law um it's quite questionable as to whether they are actually legally enforceable the billionaire contract absolutely is not legally enforceable so when kids sign the contract, do they have the chance to leave the org later in life? I mean, yeah, I mean, everybody supposedly has the opportunity to leave the org. You can break your contract, even if you're in the Sea Org, you know, you can blow, you can leave. It's obviously very hard to do that, especially over in the international base. Sometimes you have to escape. Um, you can't just walk out and leave. At a city level church, you could just walk out and leave. Um, 
but that doesn't mean it's not easy to do so because you're in this like mental um jail almost you know it's a prison of belief prison of the mind um so yeah there are elements at which you of which you can't leave and which you can but they're not going to come after you from a legal standpoint for breaking your staff contract um i hope that answers your question ash if it doesn't um please put a follow-up question and i'll try and answer that um too barry stevenson thank you for becoming a new member awesome um Okay, okay, let's crack on with some more of these because I don't want to just do super chats. I'm going to do other people too. If you want to support the channel, please consider buying me a coffee. There's a link down below um, the description, uh, and that's the best way of supporting the channel because YouTube take thirty percent of all the super chats. Um, Jessica Beach, can you describe the best day, your best day in the Church of Scientology? Trying to understand the mindset of those who are in. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't have a one particular day in mind that comes uh, comes to my mind. Like, there's not one standout day. Um, but the times that I had that were good were, you know, it was summer, really hot in London. We were going out book selling. I was hanging out with my friends, and um, you know, just having a good time in the sun, selling books, and you know, just hanging out with your friends and it was really good fun and we felt like we were on top of the earth we were helping um you know people and we were getting them into scientology and we were going to clear the planet we were united on this mission and all of that felt really good at the time i didn't know at the time that i wasn't helping i was actually harming people um but you know there were good times to be had for sure um you know obviously the negative outweighed the positive and there were some really horrible times as well um but yeah, of course, there were times that were great. Um, you know, it would be wrong to say the entirety of my life in Scientology was it was horrible all day, every day, because, you know, there were good times and there were also bad times. Um, F. Sciento London question. I often see Scientologists on mobile phones. Are they given phones with restricted OS so they can't connect to Google? What's to stop them? So um, a little bit of clarity here. Um, Scientologists are allowed mobile phones. Staff members are allowed mobile phones. It's the C organization whose phone contact and Google and YouTube and access to the internet is restricted a lot more. If you're a class five staff member, so you work at, for example, London Org or you work at Manchester, Birmingham, you know, one of those, you have a job outside of your time working for the Church of Scientology. So you have your own life. You have a phone, you have the internet, you know, you have a job, you have your business or whatever. And so there's no restrictions placed on your phone or your internet. Um, but the restriction is placed by yourself you wouldn't want to google scientology you wouldn't want to look up negative stuff because that's seen as n theta um so you kind of program yourself to not looking at negative information it's called black pr in scientology um the actual control of your personal belongings and mobile phone and stuff happens in the c organization when you're in the c org my understanding is that you're not allowed a mobile phone at all unless you're in a very specific post like for example if you're um, in OSA and you're handling PR and you have to go to meetings with external agencies and such, that's when you have to have a mobile phone. But um, a lot of SEAL members I know have mobile phones, but they're either controlled in some way or monitored um, and internet access. Again, you just wouldn't want to Google Scientology. It took me like nine or 10 years after leaving Scientology for me to Google Scientology because even though I didn't consider myself a Scientologist, I was still in that headspace of like, you know, not wanting to read bad stuff about it. But thank you for your super chat. Um, let's have a little looky here. Vault Digger, question, are there any famous Scientologists, British Scientologists that are under the radar that you met while in London? Um, yeah, not necessarily um, under the radar, but one of the first things I was told when I joined staff was that Will Smith is a Scientologist, but hush, hush, don't tell anyone. Um, at that time, he still was. I don't believe he is anymore. Um, there are other celebrities, you know, Bella Cruz, Tom Cruise's daughter, was a public at London Org while I was there. So she was studying um, and training to be a, an auditor while I was at London. Um, there's also Stephen Ridley, who joined when I was there. Um, who's a pianist he's one of my biggest advertisers on youtube actually so thanks Stephen, for um paying me to create content that's negative about scientology because i get a portion of his ad revenue um 
so yeah there are some celebs but there's not that many at all um and certainly none under the radar that i know of <clears throat> uh thank you for your question technically elizabeth moss is a british scientologist dual nationality ah there we go um absolutely um gnome sane what kind of food did you get for lunch as staff if you didn't bring your own was it the famous quiche we heard on the ono oh ross and carry podcast um so as a staff member again you have your own life so you don't get food provided for you so you would go and do um your own thing for lunch whether that's buy lunch or bring your own lunch in um i would go to a local cafe that's just around the corner that had really good pasta like spaghetti carbonara um and what else did i do i used to go to like the sandwich shops around the corner um or i bring my own stuff in um we didn't get food provided for us that's that's only the seal organization matt beavis have you considered reaching out to john atac yes john atac's great um we had a conversation a little while ago we were trying to get together and do a video uh end up not happening for some reason um but i do need to reply to a message that i got from him so yeah john atac's great um, he's been fighting Scientology for a very long period of time, way before I ha um, I even joined. <clears throat> Daniel Penny, whoa, caught alive. Keep doing what you do, Alex. I'm ex-public, only low intro stuff, but my reasons for leaving were due to 1-1 one -one issues. I was a public at pool mission. It's a large mission too. Fantastic. Thank you for contacting Daniel. Daniel, do send me an email if you want to um, share some, some of your story with me. You don't have to come on a video if you don't want to, but I'd be interested to hear about what your experience was like down at Bournemouth and Paul. Um, I'll be covering some of that actually soon. I've got a video planned where I'm talking about um, the Bournemouth and Paul mission and how they've bought a building. Uh, so yeah, again, contact hello at apostatealex.com is my email address. Matt Beavis, I've been following him for years. And yes, bug props to the Piccolo Bar. Piccolo Bar, that's what it's called. That's the one I was talking about where I got my 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 carbonara from. Uh, yeah, well remembered, Matt. <clears throat> F Scientology London, question, is there any further appeal with the council if they find against you? Um, my understanding is the complaints hearing tomorrow is final and there's no um, recourse after that, I think, is my understanding. So no. There isn't anything. Um, but great question. Form 13909, question. Any working theories as to why Freewinds is now able to dock in St. Lucia? No, I have no idea why that is. Um, you know, my guess would be because um, the Freewinds is kicked out of a load of ports in the Caribbean. The Freewinds is Scientology's ship, for those of you who don't know. Um, and it was kicked out of loads of ports for, you know, being Scientology, no one wanted them there. And it was kind of restricted to Aruba, I think, and maybe one other port. Um, but now it's been seen going to a few different islands. And I can only imagine that's due to time. I think it's probably time has passed and whoever banned them has now moved on. And they've just kept at it and trying to repair the PR relationship. Um, so they're allowed back. But I don't know. That's just a guess. That's that's a guess only. I've, I don't have any evidence to back that up. Um, boo, question. What book events, etc. do some London Scientologists go to? Is it worth protesting them there? Um, yeah, great question. I mean, we went to the, what's it called? The Mind, Body, Soul show or the Mind, Body, Spirit show. It was a big, um, like, alternative um show at the uh kensington olympia i think it was where it was all about you know alternative beliefs and spirituality and all that sort of stuff we would get a booth there and we'd sell books um we would go to spitalfields market and we had a table there for a while selling books we don't they they didn't they don't do that anymore we stopped when i was there um but i would yeah look into it i mean any exhibition that's in or around london to do with the mind body and soul any alternative therapy type things i would imagine they would have a, bo a booth there and yeah why not protest i mean the more protesting the better um but just try and remember the impact it has on the other like this is what my take on protesting is what are you trying to achieve with the protest if you were to protest outside london org it's very clear you're protesting london scientology anyone walking past will know who you're protesting if you protest outside an exhibition where scientology have a booth um what does that gain 
And I would say that what that does is it raises awareness of the organisers and the people going to the event that that particular booth is no good. And that would probably be quite good to raise awareness that this is a cult and um, don't buy Dianetics and don't go do the stress test. Um, and maybe the organisers won't have them back the following year. Um, so, yeah, just think about where you're going, why you're going there and what your what your message is. Uh, great question. Thank you. F Scientology London, HMRC rules Jaffa cakes or biscuits. Well, yeah, that's a big debate in the UK. Are Jaffa cakes cakes or biscuits? And they're cakes. It's called a Jaffa cake. Uh, hey, Messwaker, the Jaffa cake question was settled by cooking a giant Jaffa cake to demonstrate it really is a cake. Yes. Love Jaffa cakes. Uh, <laughs> Daniel Chamberlain, before mobile phones in the Sea Org, we used normal dial phones, but they had locks on them so pe as people weren't allowed to rack up the bills. There we go. The control is insane. For sure. Thank you, Daniel. Um, <clears throat> Hannah Reynolds, I do think you should report the unlive messages. That's criminal. Absolutely. And uh, this is one thing I want to be really clear about with my channel is anything that I mention or talk about that could be anything to the law enforcement please rest assured i have reported it um you know i don't come on here and make videos about um you know the charity commission and stuff without reporting this stuff if i come across some information or something that would be beneficial to a law enforcement investigation i report it and then give them a chance to do something or respond or whatever before i then create a video about it um so yeah there is uh, i've yeah reports don't worry i don't just come on here and yap um <clears throat> thank you barry stevenson question did you have weekly monthly book sales quotas what were the rewards or penalties yeah great question uh you always have to have your stats up your statistics always have to go up every single week um and yeah we would have quotas you know it was started off being 50 books a week and then it was 100 books a week and um i've still got my graph let me see let me see if I've got my graph here, because I do still have the graph of statistics from a year of book sales from London Org. Um, in terms of like rewards and penalties, the reward was that you um, don't get told off. Uh, penalties, yeah, you have to do lower conditions if your stats go down. I got commendations, like here's a commendation that I got for how great my work has been. In fact, actually, this is the um, the thing. Uh, this is to commend Charlie and all the staff, including me, helped producing an affluence on the highest number of books sold for over two years. Getting books into the hands of the public is really vital to create the expansion and changes in this society. Very well done. Uh, this is from the commanding officer of the CPLO UK, which is the Continental Publications Liaison Office. And this is my book sales graph. So that's a year of book sales at London Org. So every week your stats are counted. Um, I also got commission, you know, as a bookseller, I would buy stocks and sell them and, and get a profit off the sales. This is a pay slip I got. I have to cover up this person's name, but this is a pay because it was a, a commission off a, a, sell, a sale that I made. But at £3.60 is one of my pay slips from Scientology London. You can see it's my name at the top there. So, yeah, we did get a little bit of money, but nowhere near enough to survive on for sure. Great question. Um, let's have a little look. Educon, question. What do you remember from that time you first Googled Scientology? What was most shocking or earth shattering to you? Um, I remember just reading all of these stories of abuse and harm that was done and just thinking wow there's so much more than i was aware of and hearing what these people have got to say really shocked me i remember also whenever i heard the xenu story i just felt really uncomfortable so i would always skip it um i'd never watch it because i would always think oh i've heard this before i don't need to hear it again but deep down, that was because I felt uncomfortable hearing it still, even though I hadn't been in Scientology for years. Um, so, yeah, it took a while. One thing also, this might be funny to look at. Um, 
a few years ago, I did an AMA on Reddit. I'll see if I can find it. Now, this was after I'd left Scientology, but um, was still kind of in a Scientology mindset. Where is it? Let's see if I can find it. Uh, maybe it's gone. Ah, oh, maybe it's not there anymore. But I did an AMA in like 2018 or 2019 or something where I said, I'm an ex-Scientologist from London. Ask me anything. And if you look at the answers, it was, uh, oh, here we go. I just found it here. I was like, I wasn't. I wasn't defending Scientology, but you can see my head, my mindset was still in that kind of place. Um, you know, people were asking. I'm just trying to find them here. Yeah, look, so the way I'd answer these questions is different now. So someone asked. Um, what, so this is three years ago. What is your take on the overall picture? People complain about money or that they didn't get anything out of it, blah, blah, blah. Um, what's your take on it being an, uh, yeah, is it an, yeah, is there any potential gain or is it so evil and culty, blah, blah, blah. And I said, I entered Scientology with skepticism, reading stuff online, etc., but decided to try it for myself, and make up my own mind. It definitely helped me in some areas of my life and I have firsthand seen people's lives turned around by it there is no doubt in my mind that it helps some people however it has also hurt some people from my experience i would say a lot of religions have pros and cons but my main learning from my time in scientology is self-empowerment you can find the confidence to change your life you can but it's not the responsibility of any church or person to make this happen it's down to you um and you can see how i'm still thinking like a scientologist there um you're at cause, you're responsible for your own condition in life. Um, it's your fault that things happen to you. So I don't outright say that the abuse and such is uh, is a bad thing, which just shows that even though it's several years after leaving, it was still going on in my mind that I was defending them in some way. And I wouldn't outright call it a cult and I wouldn't outright condemn Scientology, which I do now. Um, yeah, it takes a long time to to heal those things, heal from those things um boo question does scientology basically force everyone to do the purif to even start going out the bridge even if they never did drugs yes the purification rundown is the first step on the bridge to total freedom and you have to do the purif in order to continue out the bridge it's the first step um and you have to do it even if you've never done drugs you have to do uh, the purif yes and if you've done the purif as part of narconon like if you're a drug addict or something you did the narconon program you don't have to then do the purif again if you join scientology it already counts as your first step up the bridge great question um guys get your questions in if you've got anything else you want to ask me um uh, before i start wrapping up here um while you guys do that let's go back to this giveaway so if you guys want a t-shirt, a uh, potential trouble source, peachy edition, um, I'm going to give one of these away in a couple of seconds. Um, so if you want yourselves one of these, I'm going to give one away. Pop the word Xenu in chat right now and we'll do the draw and we'll give one away to one of you lucky, um, <clears throat> lucky watchers. Pop word Xenu in the chat now if you want to win a shirt. And we'll do the StreamYard draw in a second. While doing that, Educon, question. Coke, Diet Coke, Coke Zero, Pepsi or Pepsi Max? Uh, Diet Coke. I have an unhealthy relationship with Diet Coke. I'm definitely addicted. Uh, and I drink far too much of it. But Diet Coke, yes. Um, great question. Okay. Let's do this. Are we ready? Let's go. Draw. F. Sainto London. Congratulations. You have won yourself a PTS Peach Edition t-shirt. 
Congratulations. Yay. Um, so F Sinto London, please drop me an email. Hello at apostatealex.com. And what I will do is I will reply to your email with a redemption link that you can click on that you can then order the T-shirt and the color that you want and size and it will ship it out automatically to you for free. So well done, F Scientology London. Moon Age Daydream, so close. Yes. Better luck next time. Um, but yeah, awesome. Congratulations. Um, all right, let's carry on with some of these questions. Um, Mark the Dorset SP question. Hi, Alex. What would the fallout be if Davy of the fake space Navy was ever sent down? Great question. I think I've been asked this a lot, actually. Um, I think it depends um, on the manner in which Miscavige went down. I mean, if he went to prison, for example, um, if he went to prison for some sort of tax something, I imagine that Scientologists would look at him as a bit of a martyr and a hero and um, would get behind him. If he went to prison for, um, you know, SA or um, the R word or anything like that, which I'm not suggesting he has done personally, but if he was sentenced to something like that, I think Scientologists would have a heart, a, a, a tougher time defending him and getting behind him so i think it would split scientology um or scientologists um it completely depends um i think um if he passed away he is getting old um it'll be interesting to see how that affects the leadership and who takes his place um it completely depends it's really interesting but there's just my thoughts i don't know Daniel Penny, I popped you an email, Alex. Thank you. Um, I will check my emails very shortly. Uh, Mirage Daydream, does Fourth Wall have a UK depot? Just curious about, about customs charges. Uh, my understanding is it has a, a US, uh, UK, Europe, and Australian distribution center. If you order from Fourth Wall from my uh, merch shop, if you're in the UK, you don't pay customs charges. Same in the EU, same in America, same in Australia. Um, it ships worldwide um obg foster niacin can cause gout have you seen people get gout after the period of, um i don't know not personally not specifically um but yeah taking lots of niacin is harmful and the period does do damage to your body great question awesome I'm allergic to aspartame or aspartame, however you say it. Good enough reason to not drink diet anything. Yeah. Yeah, I'm addicted to aspartame or aspartame, however you meant to say it. Um, so one thing I will share with you guys as well is I recently came across this document, which is the casual contact sales pattern. Now, this is how you sell a book in Scientology. It's a very lengthy document. Um, I'm not going to go through it now. But I think it would be interesting for everyone to see how sales really work in works in Scientology. Um, and it literally has pictures, if I scroll down. Yeah, look, pictures of how to use this to sell a book in a casual contact situation. So I will be going through this in another video because it tells you step by step how to sell the Dianetics book. And it gives you an example. Good morning. I'm sorry to disturb you. We're promoting this book. Just for information, please take a look. Put the book in their hands, showing the back of the book and continuing with the pattern as explained in the next section, creating interest. Um, so I will go through this in a future live stream because it shows exactly how we used to sell books. So if you're interested in that, keep an eye on my channel. Um, all righty, guys. So you guys are kind of quietened down a little bit on your questions so let's start bring this to a close Mirage daydream how many missions are there in the uk and where are they so there's only one mission as far as i'm aware which is bournemouth and pool um but there are orgs in sunderland uh, manchester birmingham happy which is up in um, edinburgh manchester plymouth um brighton there's an org um Obviously, London, St. Hill. It's not exactly um, expanding, but great question. Thank you so much. Um, Okie dokie. 
Tristan de Boa. Question, has the persuasiveness of tech and knowledge been affected by the rapid pace of recent technological change? Great question. Birmingham, yes, as well. Um, I don't know. Probably. I mean, I think the um, increase in content out there about Scientology and its harmful effects and the um, information available to people about Scientology and what it really is now, I think that's definitely doing damage to the recruitment tactics and the um, growth of Scientology and expansion. I think less people are joining nowadays. Um, I hope that answers your question. Um, awesome. Any other questions you guys want to ask me? I did a Q&A with Natalie Webster recently. That was really uh, good, I think. Um, if you guys have any follow-up questions to that, please get them in the chat. Um, if you haven't watched it already, um, Natalie Webster, um, whose channel is Scientology Life After a Cult, um, we did a really nice chat where we talked about my story in Scientology, the recent drama that's going on. I answered a bunch of questions about the aftermath, the SPTV Foundation and so on. Um, so yeah, I'd recommend it. I think it was a really good um conversation is very fair and balanced i think natalie did a great job i would suggest you go and watch it if you have any other questions for me get them in we might do a part two as well um because a lot of people have said things like my story doesn't add up or i've changed my story over time and i'm yet to see an example of what's changed or how the um, my story's developed or or whatever but i'm open to trying to answer those questions so if um I said to Natalie, if you want to watch the interviews I did with Chris Shelton and with Aaron Smith Levin when I first started speaking out, and then maybe compare the way I told my story on her channel to to those, maybe we can um, answer some of these questions about how it's changed because I don't think it has. But um, yeah, that would be interesting um, for sure. Fault Digger. Did you know that Neil Gaiman apparently used to run the Birmingham Org? Yes, he did. He did um, run the Birmingham Org. And the Gaiman family are married into the Calciotti family, who I used to work with very closely at London Org. Uh, Zoe B, question. Have they updated their books to ebook or audio audible books? They Are they still stuck in the printed book world? They are still stuck in the printed book world, for sure. They don't have audio books available on Audible. Um, you can buy the lectures and audiobooks from Scientology, but they are in either tape or CD format, and you can buy a CD player to listen to them. Um, it's interesting. Um, ba -ba -da -bum. Let's have a little look. Have any further Scientology weddings taken place at the London Org after the initial one they fought for? As far as I'm aware, no. There haven't been any more weddings. There might have been, but I don't believe so. I think that was the only one. Um, and someone else asked earlier, I can't find it, but someone asked if there was if you could get married at St. Hill. And as far as I'm aware, yes, you can, but I don't think anybody has. That's a different um different matter all righty any more questions from you guys we'll start wrapping up if not again this is just another example of how people say that there's so many questions people have of me that i never answer and i'm avoiding questions well we've been on for an hour and no one's asked the questions that a select few people suggest I never answer, which indicates to me that they're the only ones with those questions and they don't care to ask. So fair enough. Um, Alex and I will sneak into St. Hill grounds for our clandestine SP wedding. <laughs> How funny. I love that. Um, all right, guys. Cool. So thank you so much for joining me tomorrow. As I said, is uh, the East Grinstead Town Council um, complaints hearing. I will be live afterwards and I'll give you the, the rundown on how it went. Um, Boo says, I've got, there's two questions that I missed. I'm sorry, Boo. There's just so much going on in the chat. Um, 
if I miss them, email me hello at apostatealex.com and I'll answer them there. Um, learning about life question what select questions am I supposed to ask? You can ask anything, that's the whole point of a QA. There's no select questions you're supposed to ask. You can ask whatever you want and I will answer them um, if I can. But yes, tomorrow is the um, East Grinstead Town Council hearing. So I will be complaining about my treatment by the council, about how it's inappropriate for them to call me a bully um, on letterhead of paper. And obviously we had the Daily Mail article come out recently that um, showed the ties and the extent to which Scientology is linked to East Grinstead Town Council and how they're trying to infiltrate um, the council. So I'll report back. And let you know, as I said, I cannot uh, record it, but I will report back for sure. Um, the hearing is at just before 3 p.m. UK time. I don't know how long it'll be, so it might be around the same time um, as we are now, but who knows? No, I want to ask one of these important questions that apparently you don't answer. You answer everything I can think of. Yeah. Exactly. Certain people are saying that I don't answer questions about my time in Scientology or I'm not being honest or I've changed my story. And I ask, OK, well, what's changed? And they've not been able to provide me an example of what's changed. And apparently I'm not being forthcoming and loads of people have got questions that aren't being answered. And um, there we go. Here we are an hour in and no one's brought any of that stuff up. So there we go. Uh, Boo, can you ask the council why they hired someone called Dick Sweatman? So Dick Sweatman is, he works for Mid-Sussex District Council and West Sussex County Council. He's not at the town council level anymore. He used to be the former mayor, uh, but he is not at the East Grinstead Town Council anymore. Um, but also they're not hired. He's voted in uh, by the electorate. So the people of East Grinstead voted him in. Uh, Moon Age Daydream, do a quick reaction on your way home from the hearing. That's a possibility. East Grinstead is in the middle of nowhere, but if I've got enough signal on the way back, then yeah, I, I will potentially do that. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining me. If you want to support the channel, please buy me a coffee with the link in the description. There's also an Amazon wish list and PayPal as well. If you want to send financial support that way, it helps me get to East Grinstead tomorrow for the hearing. It helps me continue doing this. The more I earn from YouTube and ad revenue, the more time I can spend doing this because that means I can take on less work um, with my freelance job. So um, yeah, the more support you guys can give, the better. And that allows me to bring you more content and uh, forward the aims of my activism. So thank you for everyone that's supported so far. Also, pressing the like button, commenting, um, all that sort of stuff helps with the algorithm. That helps share this video out to more people and hopefully more people will be helped by it. So if you want to support the channel, that's the best way of doing so. Thank you so much for joining me. If you've got any questions that weren't answered or perhaps you're watching on the replay crew and you want to ask me something, please drop it in the comments or email me hello at apostatealex.com and I'll try and bring it up in the next live stream. Um, but that's it from me now. And I'm going out uh, with my one favorite saying, which is I'm on war footing and I'm not fucking about.